Hey guys, this video is brought to you by Fusion Charts, a JavaScript library which allows you to create interactive charts for web, mobile, and enterprise applications. Fusion Charts can be easily integrated into your choice of front end or back end frameworks or languages. I really enjoy using Fusion Charts in my tutorials and projects since it works across platforms and browsers, and I can customize the charts to my specific requirements using the appropriate colors, themes, annotations and many other cool features. To learn how you can use Fusion Charts in your next project, head on over to FusionCharts.com. What's up, everybody? And welcome to another JavaScript Nuggets video where we cover nifty JavaScript topics that will come in handy when working on various JavaScript apps. And today we're going to talk about filter and find methods that we can use on arrays. As a side note, if you're not familiar how array methods that take in callback functions work. So think methods like map, filter, for each, reduce. I would suggest watching the map method video first. It is available in the playlist since we spend more time on the general idea of the use of callback functions in array methods. So filter and find. Now, there are a lot of similarities between the two. And essentially, if you would want it to, you could just use filter. So technically, you don't even need to use find. However, there are some use cases where it's a bit more beneficial to use find. And of course, I uh, will talk about them. Now, as far as filter, it returns a new array, just like map method. But unlike map, we essentially can manipulate the size of the new array. Because remember, with map, we always at the same size for the new array as the original. However, with filter, we are returning items based on condition. So for example, if I have 10 items and only five items match that condition, then of course my new array will be those five items. If none of them match, then I'll have empty array. And then if all of them match, then of course I'll still have that original array. And I'll start with the filter. And then once we understand the general idea, you'll see how uh, they are very similar. So there are just a few gotchas about the find. And the way we work with filter, again, we would need to come up with new array. So we go with cons. And then, for example, I'm looking for young people. I have the array of people. All of them have age, position, and all that. And I'm just checking for people that are less than 25. So less or equal than 25. So I'm creating a new array. So I say young people, and that is equal to a people. So my original array, and then filter. And this is where we pass in that callback function. Now, if I return true from the callback function, then essentially, I'm just going to be returning that item. Now, if I'm not returning the true, then of course, I'll skip that item. And I can showcase that first by saying that if we pass in the parameter, we of course can always console log. So if I go with person, notice each and every iteration, I'm getting that specific person. And if I will return true, if I'll just say return and then true, of course, you'll see that if I log young people, my array right now is going to be the same as the original array. So we have our callback function. And then in the callback function, we set up a condition. So if the condition is true, then we return that item in the iteration. If the condition is not true, then of course, we don't return it. That's why if, for example, I pass in return, and then false, then of course, I have the empty array, because now none of the items were returned. Now, of course, that's not how usually you would set that up. For example, we could do something like this, where we say if and then person that age is less than 30. So we go with if person that age is less than 30, then I would want to return it. I'll say here return and then person. And now you'll see that I will have only two items. Why? Because there's only two items that are less than 30. So within the callback function, we set up our condition where I say if person age is less than 30, then return a person. But of course, we can set up a shortcut as well. So in this case, I'll just comment out for your reference. And in the next line, I'll just say return. 
and then person dot age is less than 30. Please understand that it is the same thing, because again, in here, we're just setting up a condition and I'm returning either false or true. And then if, of course, the condition is true, then we're returning the item. So, of course, in this case, that's the first two. However, if the condition is not met, if, for example, age is more than 30, then, of course, it is going to be false. Now, also, I could just check what is the position, correct? For example, I would just want to get the developers. Now, in my case, I only have one. So that's why we'll check it out with just one developer. So we go with cons. Now, I'll still imagine that maybe there might be some more eventually. And that is going to be equal to a people, then filter. And then remember, we're using arrow functions, correct? And arrow functions have implicit return. So even though technically I could set up everything here within the curly braces, I also can just set up a one liner where I'm implicitly returning my condition. So in here again, I'll call this person, but please keep in mind, we can call this banana if we wanted to. And then I can just say person dot position is equal to a developer. And if that is the case, then of course, return. So if we'll go with console log and then we take a look at developers. Now we only have one. Why? Well, because only one item in my list match the position. Also, as a quick side note, yes, I'm using here objects in the array. Just keep in mind that if you don't have objects, for example, if you just have strings, then the only difference is that you're not checking for that object. You just still set up that particular parameter, whatever name you would want. And then you just say whether that item is equal to developer. So I'm trying to say is imagine a scenario where you have the array with just strings. So instead of going person dot, because of course, now we're checking in the object, you would be just checking for that item. So you'd say if that parameter is equal to whatever you're looking for. Now let's also take a look at what happens if we have no match. And we kind of covered this the very, very beginning, where we just went with true or false. Or let's also try to do that with our example as well. So I'm going to go with const and then I'll look for senior devs. And I can kind of see that I don't have any, but still, let's try it out. We're going to go with people, then filter, then again, our callback function. And then I'm going for the person. And then in here, I'll say person and that position. And you know, in order to make this a bit more interesting, let me just replace person with item just so you can see that, of course, we can use whatever parameter name we would want. So I'm going to go with item position, and that is equal to my senior and then a dev. And we already probably know that we're just going to get a empty array. So if we go with senior and then devs, we'll see that we have empty array. Why? Well, because no position match the senior dev. And that's why we have the empty array. So if none of the items match, then you just get the empty array. Now, find works in a similar way where, again, we iterate over our array. However, it returns a single instance. That single instance is an object. It returns a first match. And if no match, then it is undefined. All right. So let's start working on that. And I'm going to go with Peter. So I'm going to be looking for the Peter. So go with const Peter is equal to a people and find. Now, if you want, you can console log the person. You'll see that we're still iterating. But in this case, I'm just going to say person name. And if that is equal to a Peter. And now if I'll console log, you'll notice that I just have this one object. So I just have the item. So let me be a bit more specific, where essentially, you're just going to get that particular item. And in this case, that is a object. So for example, let me quickly set up, I don't know, fruits. And I'll say here, orange, orange, and then pear, and then, I don't know, lemon. And if we'll try to find the item, so let's go with a next line. 
where we say const and then fruit, and that is equal to fruits and then find. And then we set up our callback function, correct? And in here, we're looking for fruit. And now I'm just checking whether the fruit is equal to, I don't know, lemon. Let's go with lemon. And the same would work like I just said with filter, where it doesn't mean that we can only use it with objects. If you have just strings, just make sure that you have parameter and you set that parameter equal to whatever you're looking for. And if I log fruit, you'll notice that I have this string of lemon. So what I'm trying to say here is, yeah, it returns a single instance, but if you'll have here strings, of course, it's not going to return a object. In our case, since we are setting up the object, that's why, of course, we are returning a object. So please keep that in mind where it returns a single instance. And you know, maybe I'll just remove that object. So it's a little bit less confusing. Just remember, with find, you always get that one single instance. Now, what happens though, if we have no match? And I guess I'm going to go with old person. I'm going to say I'm looking for the person that is older than 35. So old person is equal to people that find. Then we go with person. And then we'll say person that age is bigger than 35. Now, do we have any people that are older than 35? Well, the answer is no. We have 20, 25, and 30, and 35. So what do you think is going to be the result of our old person? And let's check it out. Of course, it is undefined. So that is going to be different where with filter, you'll always at least get this empty array. With find, you will get undefined if nothing matches your condition. And now, of course, let's set it up how we have multiple matches. And then let's see which match are we getting first. So I'm going to go with const and I'll name this a random person. And that is equal again to people. Then we're using find. And then we'll pass in our callback function person. And I'm looking for person that age is less than 35. Now, in this case, of course, I have multiple instances. I have 20, 25 and 30. So let's see which one I'm getting back as my result when we talk about find. Remember, with filter, of course, we would get all these three values. However, with find, if I go with a random person, of course, I have Bob. Why? Well, because Bob is the first one. So always keep that in mind that with find, you'll get that first instance. Now, of course, it's nice to use find when you have unique values, because then, of course, you won't run into that issue. For example, usually, from APIs, the IDs are unique. So it's very nifty to use find in that case. And also the last thing I would want to showcase how both of them are similar. So technically, if you wanted to, you could use filter as well. But you just need to keep in mind that there's going to be some differences how you can access those values. So remember, when we we're setting up the Peter, this was my value, correct? Now, what if I would want to console log the position from the Peter? Well, I'd simply say log and then Peter and then position, right? Because that is the value that I'm getting back as far as find. I'm getting that single instance. Now with filter, even if you have just one item, you always have the array. So let me showcase that. So const Anna is equal to people, then filter in this case, callback function. And then in here, person, and I'll say if the person name is equal to Anna. So person that name is equal to Anna. And if that is the case, if I would want to have a position, the problem is going to be that Anna is still an array. So in order to access that position, remember that with filter, you'll have to look for the item number one, meaning the item with the zero of index, and only then you can go for the position. And of course, in this case, you are looking for the intern. So like I said, at the very, very beginning, yes, technically, you can use filter where you would use find or just keep in mind that with find, you right away have access to this instance. So for example, for this object, you right away access it. So you can just say whatever is the name of the variable and then dot and the property you're looking for. However, with array, of course, you go with whatever is the name, 
then you're looking for that zero item. So item with a index of zero. And then you're looking for that particular property. And that's how you can use filter and find methods in JavaScript.